Stan Gibalisco here, continuing our little tutorial session of explanations for the way the diagrams handle signals and currents in my book, Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, third edition published by McGraw-Hill in October 2013. When I say my book, that means that I am the reviser for the third edition, the previous editions done by Traster and Lisk. Uh, the improvements in this edition include completely redrawn artwork all throughout. For example, there you go, figure 1-1. One -one. I, I redrew all of the art in this book, edited the text, and added some new stuff in the back. McGraw-Hill saw fit to come out with a spiral binding. Note that in the paper-bound book. Good heavy stock paper. The thing will lay flat. It'll last a long time. And because it's a paper-bound book, which I recommend over the electronic version, in just about every case, for reasons that I've alluded to in other videos. Anyway, you can spill your Diet Mountain Dew on it, and all it'll get is wet. It has no battery, requires no boot-up, and acquires no bugs nor viruses. With that, let's get on to the... Uh, if you watch the all of the videos in this sequence, go to Beginner's Schematics, the playlist entitled Beginner's Schematics in my YouTube channel. Now, by complex circuits, that's Chapter 5 we're in right now. It doesn't mean really complicated. It just means more complicated than really simple, okay? In the previous video in this sequence, I talked about a crystal radio receiver and there it is the whole banana that I uh, did complete with a little extra smudge for your edification and enlightenment which resulted from my handling these pages too soon after washing my dirty hands which became dirty reinstalling an electrical outlet just a little while ago. There is the Diagram figure 5-1 of the crystal radio circuit, crystal set radio. If I said crystal oscillator before, that was wrong. Crystal radio. Here's an audio preamplifier circuit that you can use to boost the audio uh, in that uh, crystal set radio to drive a small loudspeaker, for example, figure 5-2. I'm not going to go uh, and explain all of the operation of this circuit because I already did that for an audio amplifier circuit way back in uh, chapter 4, uh, four figure 4-17. Four very, very similar circuit to, to figure 5-2. Figure 5-2 looks a little simpler, I think, because it doesn't include the test points that the figure 4-17 does. But if you want to drive an even bigger set of speakers, like say a, a stereo speaker, big stereo hi-fi speaker, you can build an audio power amplifier. The other amplifier is just a pre-amplifier. You can follow this circuit right here in figure 5-2 the preamplifier with a power amplifier, and I'd like to draw that circuit diagram for you right now. The input goes to an audio transformer. That's going to have to have a powdered iron core. That transformer serves to isolate this circuit from the previous one, and it also matches the impedance if you are so predisposed. Now here, what we have is a very interesting situation, two NPN transistors. Now that is the diagram as shown in figure 5-4 on page 88. Note that here the emitter is on top. Here the emitter is on the bottom. There's a reason for that uh, 
for that little trick. They're both connected together and they both go through a resistor to ground. Now notice these bases of these transistors go straight to the ends of the transformer. Then this particular transformer has a center tap. And it's very important now that you understand that this tap has to go exactly in the center of the secondary winding. You don't want to adjust this for impedance. You want that thing right there in the center. Then you have another resistor here going to ground a capacitor across that and you have another resistor here going up to positive 12 volts the positive power supply voltage these two resistors here provide the proper bias for the bases of these transistors now these two transistors their collectors, now this is where things get a little bit interesting, they go to opposite ends of another audio transformer, powdered iron core, that's what these dashed lines mean, and another center tap. The center tap, however, on this transformer goes straight to the positive power supply voltage. So you need this resistor here to limit the current. If you connected this, uh, these two um, emitters directly to ground, you'd have uh, uh, probably too much current through these devices and you might run the risk of burning them out. I would perhaps add a capacitor across this resistor just to, to make sure that uh, the bias is pure DC throughout and that none of the audio blows back and, and affects the, the bias, then you simply take the output from the secondary of this transformer. Now, these two transistors are NPN bipolar transistors in this example. They could be PNP, and then you would just reverse the polarity of the power supply. But the important thing, the crucial thing for a circuit like this to work properly, is that these two transistors here, nice, neat little arrow pointers, they must be identical. Identical part numbers and even when you match the part numbers, it's best to conduct experiments and make sure that the characteristic curves of these two transistors are as nearly identical as possible. Because what you're going to be doing with this circuit like this is that during half of the wave cycle, say the electrons, let's just say the electrons are flowing from bottom to top here. That'll make this base more positive and this base more negative. This base will be more positive so this transistor will conduct and amplify during the half of the cycle when electrons are flowing from bottom to top here. When the situation is reversed this base will become more negative cutting off this transistor and then this one will amplify and you'll get electron current flowing through here like that. So when electrons are flowing from top to bottom here, you're getting positive, relatively positive here, so you're getting electrons also flowing from top to bottom here. When electrons are flowing from bottom to top here, you're going to get a more negative voltage here. It's going to cut this transistor off this one is going to conduct and electrons are going to flow out here and from bottom to top through the primary of this transformer.
So these transformers, transformers, by the way, are great ways to isolate uh, circuits to keep direct current interaction from taking place, and yet fully allowing audio or allowing all the audio or all the alternating current signal that you want at all the frequencies that you want to pass through. Capacitors are okay for that purpose, but they tend to have a low pass or a high pass um, a high pass response. That is to say they don't they discriminate against lower frequency signals depending on the value of the capacitor. So transformers are bulkier than capacitors are, they cost more, but in an audio circuit like this it's very important that you design it to produce good fidelity. You want, when you have a situation with no signal, you want both of these transistors to be exactly at their cutoff levels. That's why you need a little bit of bias here. If you simply grounded these bases directly, you would get, they would be cut off, but you would also have a small forward breakover threshold here and a small forward breakover threshold here, which would introduce a little bit of distortion into the audio wave. Now, I know this is a little bit of a, a, little bit of a highfalutin discussion here. I warned you about that in the book in the Follow the Flow blurb for this circuit, which you will find on page 89. If you don't want quite so much detail, so much technical detail, but I'm trying to provide a little bit more in these videos. Otherwise, why make them? You know, if they're not going to add anything to the book, what's the point? What do you want to make uh, these videos for? Some of you may be asking that question anyway. I have no answer. I have no answer. I decline to answer. I take the fifth. I take the fifth. This is called a push pull circuit because it sort of pushes and then pulls and one half of the cycle you might think of as push the other side as pull so that uh, then the output here will probably go to a fairly large speaker and this transformer will be designed in such a way as to match the impedance output of these transistors to the impedance of the speaker that you use and then you'll get a good loud audio signal from that little crystal set radio receiver. But you will need power supply here. You can't just run it off the antenna alone. Stan Jabalisco signing off from the Black Hills of South Dakota, United States of America, where the temperature tonight is going to get down to 20 below zero. I've got a little thing jury-rigged to try and heat my truck up so it will start in the morning. I guess in the morning, we're going to find out if that works. If it does, I'll make a video for you. It's kind of neat looking. It's kind of a contraption. Until next time, have fun and so long.